first process is to blow cold air into the hot air balloon as it lays on its side. The mechanism known as the parachute is fitted in the very top of the hot air balloon envelope. Uh, it's made from the same material as the rest of the balloon. While the cold inflation of the balloon is taking place, the team and the pilot will go and access the upper section of the balloon. The parachute is held in place during the cold inflation and the hot inflation using small velcro tabs. These are positioned around the rim of the parachute and around the rim of the parachute aperture, the hole in the balloon through which the air could escape. While the cold inflation and then the subsequent hot inflation is taking place, the weight of the parachute is carried by these small velcro tabs. Having looked inside, the position of the velcro tabs is identified by these small squares in the video. These are two to four centimeter square, uh, velcro patches with half of the velcro attached to the disc of the parachute and the other half attached to the main envelope itself. During the cold inflation phase pilots access the inside of the balloon through the mouth and check that the ropes are in good working order, not tangled and that the pulleys which are going to operate the system during flight and deflation are all in good working order. Looking at the balloon from the outside we can see the disc of the parachute here in red and white against the main envelope of the balloon in blue. The parachute bulges slightly, as it's not a true flat disc, but has undulations in its surface to allow the material to seal and prevent the leaking of warm air from inside the balloon. And we can see load tapes which run from the crown ring at the very centre and top of the parachute over the outside of the parachute aperture. These are not sewn in position onto the top of the parachute, but do help prevent the parachute pushing up any further out of the top of the envelope. Heat is added into the balloon and in this phase the weight of the parachute is being taken by the velcro tabs at the top of the balloon which were installed earlier by the crew. Once the balloon has been heated and stood vertically the parachute is beginning to be held in place by the pressure inside the envelope. This is pushing up on the underside of the large disc of material. We no longer need the velcro to hold it in position anymore, and so the pilot will operate the deflation system, a rope which runs from the basket up into the structure of the balloon. This pulls the edge of the parachute down, allows it to twist or turn into position, and once again reseal with the pressure of the warm air pushing up from underneath. we slow down this process to give a more detailed view, we can see the actions taking place around the screen. On the left and the right of the balloon, we can see pulleys positioned about three panels up from the mouth of the balloon. As the pilot pulls on the operating line, in this case a red line, we can see the sides of the balloon begin to move inwards, and the parachute then pull down and rotate, and we can see here in this piece of footage that the black section begins out of alignment. We're also able briefly to see in this piece of footage the sun shining through the gap which is created between the parachute and the envelope. There are a series of lines which allow the pilot to operate the parachute system either in flight or after landing. The pilot operating system, sometimes red or candy line which descends into the basket. The pull down lines which are positioned between a pulley on the operating system and the outer edge of the parachute. These form a cone shape. When pulled on, this operates the edge of the parachute, bringing it down and creating a gap for the air to escape. Other ropes in the upper envelope include what are known as the retaining lines or centering lines. These are formed in a circular array and connect the side of the envelope to the side of the parachute. Just occasionally it's possible to visualise this from looking at the outside of the balloon. Here we can see the white vertical tapes are distorted few panels down from the top of the balloon. 
This is where the retaining lines are interacting with the surface, as the parachute is used and deployed to cool the balloon and bring it down onto the ground. We can take a close-up look at the internal workings of a balloon. I've drawn a few lines on here, in this case in pink to demonstrate the candy line or the pilot operating line. In blue, I've highlighted the pull-down cone, a series of ropes that we've talked about before but only been able to see from the pilot's perspective as a series of lines which radiate from the pulley to the edge of the parachute. And in green we have the retaining lines which are holding the edge of the parachute in tension. There are limitations on how far a pilot may be interested in pulling the parachute down into the balloon during flight. This cools the balloon, allowing it to descend, but is not something that you want to pull too far. So the combination of retaining lines allows it to snap back into position and be held there by the pressure of the balloon. Once the balloon has landed, the pilot may wish to vent significant amounts of air. And so we can see here a secondary position where the parachute can rotate much further down into the balloon. 